Hello, Captains, and welcome back to our Let's Play Star Trek Online Romulan Faction Reman Character Tactical Career playthrough here. So I'm on our character. Now, as of the last video, if you missed that, check that out. In that video, we didn't play any missions, but I did review the Valdor Warbird, which is what I'm using right now at sub-commander level doing the little STF battle that we did in that. It was a fleet battle. Uh, it took us to level 26 in that mission, so now we are actually level 26. In the last several missions before that, we were infiltrating the Tal Shiar. We are now beyond that storyline. It's over, and so I have put on my Romulan, or my Riemann, excuse me, my Riemann Klingon outfit again. This is the specific Riemann Klingon look with the Romulan Klingon belt think that gives us a bit of a Klingon edge look there with still the unique Riemann um, wearables. So I like that look. It's very cool. It's got boots and everything too. It's a good look. So that's our look now. We're back to our normal selves. We no longer are infiltrating the Tal Shiar. In fact, we're moving on past that storyline into new territory today with a new mission. Also, in the last video, if you did not see it, um, my traits had disappeared, and I don't know why or when my traits had gone missing. But for some reason, all of my traits were gone. And no, I had not respect or done anything. They just vanished on their own. But I don't know at which point in the past they had done that. So it could have been several missions we have played. It could have been that I did not have traits enabled. But now I have gone through and uh, looked at all my traits and re-enabled ground and personal traits. So now I have, I've got Mind Drain, which is my Riemann power again. I've got um, Soldier for bonus energy damage and crit severity. I got Rifle Training for my weapon. I've got Strike Team Specialist, which is critical chance, a chance for critical chance. And then um, Field Technician is Kit Readiness, improves kit module cooldowns. That's on ground. And then on space, I've got Thrill Seeker for flight speed. I have Operative, which improves critical chance and severity. I've got Beam Training for bonus weapon damage. I've got Accuracy Rating Improvement, and then Projectile Training as well, Projectile Weapon Damage. So all my traits are back on. I don't know why they disappeared in the first place. Also, um, thank you for letting me know in the comments that that other trait that I got uh, a few missions back was this one right here that it automatically added under this other section. This is called Deprogrammed. It's a plus 3% bonus all damage versus Ilachi. And it's immune to damage debuff from Ilachi Noxious Gas. So that's a cool little um, tra extra trait there that we have for when we go up against the Ilachi, which will be a thing. But anyway, my traits are back, so that's good. Everything else is pretty much the same. Um, just been adding skill points where needed and, and all that. I'm trying to max out crit chance and severity right now. And we're moving on through. We are level 26 and we're going to go to the missions today. And we're going to start a new one. So in the last series it was called In Shadows. We're done with that. We're starting a new thing today called Yesterday's War. Join the fight against rogue time travelers in a struggle to protect and preserve the, the galactic timeline. So we're going to do some time travel type of missions here. The one now I'm going to do these two missions together and you're going to see why. The Once and Future Agent is a very tiny mission. It is to introduce us to this new storyline. And then the core of the matter is actually today's mission. This is the big one. So it says, the once and future agent, meet with temporal agent Daniels to discuss how you can help secure the global galactic timeline. Joel on true, Subcommander. I am Subcommander Kale, a temporal agent working to keep the timeline intact and secure. You have been identified to me as a brave and capable officer. We could use your assistance on a mission of a critical nature. Due to the sensitive nature of the mission, I cannot discuss it over subspace transmissions. If you can speak with me on the flotilla, I can tell you more. Find me in the observation lounge. We actually need to go to the flotilla and locate this person to proceed to the next thing here. So let's do that. I'm going to go to the flotilla. Now these missions here, these time travel missions, were introduced in... 
the original series expansion of this game and they integrated some of these original series uh, missions into the main storyline as part of the main storyline. So we're going to have a few unique missions that didn't used to be there before the, the uh, TOS expansion. But now they are here, and they're very cool missions. These are um, time travel-esque missions. If you have never seen Enterprise, may be a little odd to you, but in the series Enterprise, we were introduced to a character named Daniels, who is a time traveler. And um, that's who we will be dealing with for this series of missions. Very important to know that, because that will be our contact and who we will be working with. And this is a nice break from all the uh, Romulan um, subterfuge, you know, stuff that we have been working with um, previously with the Tal Shiar and all that. It's a nice little break doing a little something different here from the Romulan storyline. We will get back to the Romulan storyline, but this is just a nice little break from that real quick here. Uh, so here we go. Talk to Subcommander Kale, Temporal Defense. Thank you for coming, Subcommander Omega. We've been contacted by Daniels, one of our agents from the 31st century. It's his job to monitor the timeline for problems and to restore order in the case of any temporal disruptions. There's been an incursion in the 23rd century and Daniels would like your help in dealing with it. If you're willing to meet with him, he can explain the situation in more detail. All right, very well, I'll hear what he has to say. And there he Thank is. Thank you for coming. My name is Daniels. In case you're wondering, this is a temporal observatory. From here, I can monitor the time stream against any incursions. We've become aware of several temporal incidents led by rogue Nakul agents. They've been using a new form of time travel that we can't detect. We were unaware of their activities until we started noticing changes in the time stream. The latest of these changes happened in the 23rd century at the Galorndon core system. We believe the Nakul are involved, along with a planet killer, a doomsday machine. If that's the case, we need to stop them at all costs. I know I can count on you to go back in time with me and preserve the timeline. So again, this is all about the Cold War timeline or Cold Cold Timeline War, or whatever it was called, in Enterprise. And this ties in a lot of things. We detected significant from that. temporal activity in the Galorndon core system. Hello. So that will basically end that little mission there. That again, like I said, the once and future agent, just to introduce us to that. And now the actual mission we're gonna play today is called the core of the matter. Daniels has discovered unusual temporal activity in the 23rd century Romulan space and requires your assistance. So we're gonna go back to the 23rd century here as a Reman. We are on the Romulan faction, so it'll be interesting to see if there's anything there, like if they recognize us as a Reman or a Romulan or whatever. We've detected significant temporal activity in the Galorndon core system circa the 23rd century. I'm going to investigate it, and I'd like you to join me. We believe the Nakul are involved, along with a planet killer, a doomsday machine. If so, we need to stop them at all costs. I'll provide your ship with holographic camouflage. It's best if the Romulans of that time don't see a vessel from the future. Now this is very interesting, Galorndon Core. I want you to remember that planet because this played an important role in a Star Trek TNG episode. It's the one where Geordi was trapped on a planet and the, the electrical storms were so bad on the planet that he couldn't see, his visor didn't work, and he was technically blind on the planet. Luckily, another Romulan was also trapped on the planet, and together they had to learn to work with each other and survive to get off the planet. And it was a confrontation between the Enterprise and the Romulans. So this is a, or is, was a Romulan planet, was definitely a Romulan planet in the past, and something happened to it in the, D in the TNG era time and it was devastated and I guess it was in the neutral zone or close to the neutral zone something like that 
So this all fits in and ties in together. It ties in with the temporal Cold War of the Enterprise, and it ties in with a TNG episode. And uh, you're going to see some really cool stuff in this one. So let's do this. Except stay safe out there. Oh, I forgot to look at the rewards. We'll look at them, of course, when uh, the mission's over, because these time travel missions have do have some cool rewards in them. These were later additions to the game. Again, uh, expansion featured episode releases, and so the rewards in these in these missions specifically, these later missions that came into the game, are actually really useful and very good. Let's go to the Galernan Core system. And we're going to go back in time. Going back in time to the 23rd century. And Galernan Core is over here. Galornan Core is over here, I should say. We are now traveling at warp 7.78. Um, yeah, nothing really to note here. No changes from the last mission video. Just that we did a review on this ship and found out that it's a pretty good tier 3 ship, even though we are limited. It is still a good ship to fly, and I have it very maneuverable with all of the buffs I have to flight speed and turn rate, which make it very fun to fly. It's a very fun ship to fly, and I've made it that way specifically. Now, I don't remember how many missions are under yesterday's war. I know that after we finish this, more will open up, uh, but maybe not till later in the game. There's this whole section later on called Future Proof, which ties into this, the Nikul, but it's later in the game, like at the very end, as you can see. Um, and so we'll have that. That's That ties in with actually this stuff here. Um, it's it's very interesting how it all works, but I I am not sure how many will be here. I'm not sure how many missions. I think maybe a maybe one or two more might pop up. I'm not sure. I don't remember how it works since they've integrated these uh, stories or retro retro graded them, retro inter retro canoned them into the storyline. Um, it's a little odd, but I've never, like I said, played the game where these missions have been put in this order uh, so this is all new in this order we're almost there way over here in the Narandra sector another planet we've heard of in TNG probably Narandra 3 that sounds familiar Here we go. Begin the core of the matter. So we will be traveling into the past. And there we go. And we will be camouflaged with holographic camouflage. Oh, there we go. We look like a um, Tavaro. I believe that's called a Tavaro. We've arrived, Sub Commander. The holographic camouflage that Daniel's provided is online, or a Talis. <laughs> Talis or Trevorrow is one of those. As far as the Romulans of this time are concerned, we're in a Talis class warbird. Excellent work, Daniels. Thank you. I've also transmitted files that will establish your cover identity as Tall Shiar security operatives. You'll need to put this data into their local network before entering the research facility, however. There's a comms satellite nearby that you can use to accomplish this. We need to fly to this satellite and we are going to pretend to be Tal Shihar. And, and we are a Talis. 23rd century Talis. And we are in the 23rd century. And there's Galornan Core and there's a doomsday machine. Data transmission complete. All our Tal Shiar credentials are in the system and should withstand scrutiny. I'd expect a fair amount of fear and loathing from their staff. 
Unannounced visits from the Tal Shiar aren't, exa aren't exactly a cause for celebration. Well, let's hope the Tal Shiar's reputation keeps us above suspicion. Approach Kalorndon Corps. Reading the Doomsday Machine on sensors, it must be inactive. Recommend a close scan. Tall Shi'ar vessel, cease all sensor scans of the device immediately. You do not have the proper clearance. Watch your tone, Nakul. We will respect your wishes for now. So the Nakul... And a doomsday machine. Okay, let's head to transporter range. IRW Morari, this is Galorndon Station Command. Please transmit your security credentials. Acknowledged. Data received, Morari. Welcome to Galorndon Core. Sending you transporter coordinates now. I've taken the liberty of informing Commander Chulak. I'm sure the director will want to greet you personally. Very well. I'm looking forward to it. Marari out. Okay. We're going to get all of our bridge crew. And if you're wondering about how we'll look, well, guess what? Doomsday machines seek and destroy planetary bodies, consuming what remains as fuel. And yet, there's one in orbit just sitting there. Peaceful. It looks like reports of the Nakul gaining the ability to control the machines are accurate. We need to find out how. And fast. Your holographic disguises should conceal you while you search the facility. Good hunting. So there's a doomsday machine, and it sounds like the Nakul have the ability to control the machine. Wow. Okay. Thanks. We'll need it. Keep us posted if anything changes, Daniels. We'll put the planet between the RRW hand of Omega and the doomsday machine just in case. Stay on guard. Let me know if that thing even twitches a little. And here is how we will get along in this place. We look like Romulans now. Not Remans, not anything else. We are Romulan. Holographic disguises, everybody. Of course, our weapons sticking off out of our back kind of give us away, but we're just going to pretend like they don't see that. Oops. And look at our classic 23rd century era Tal Shiar outfits. Aren't these... Just really nice looking. Look at that. The sash, the way they look, they're very shiny. I mean, ooh, look at that skirt. Yes, 23rd century skirts are back. Everybody, this is great. And we are on a planet. And if you didn't notice, there's a graininess. And this graininess is a post processing filter that this mission uses. And it's to help indicate to us that we are indeed in the past. It's, so, it's supposed to make it feel like it's an old t uh, TOS, the original series, episode. Isn't that cool? They really uh, put some thought into this. And here, this is Galorndon Core. It's a beautiful place. It is not the electrical nightmare that it was when Jordy landed on it. Notice that? It's a beautiful place, and there's buildings here, and it's, it's wonderful. Wonderful, the Tal Shiar. They're talking about us, all right. The latest shipment of ale of late. Ooh, Nakul are here. This area is restricted. You need to leave now. I am a subcommander of the Tal Shiar. Step aside. My orders are clear, Romulan. No one is to pass this point until the meeting is concluded. No one. Not even Chulak himself. You'll wish you hadn't crossed the Tal Shiar, lackey. <laughs> I'm gonna tell him off, man. Of course, man, that's exactly what my character would do. Subcommander, it is my duty to inform you that this area is restricted, sir. Not to me, Centurion. Step aside now. Y yes, Subcommander. At once. Forgive my rudeness. Uh, access granted. Let me get the door for you. Thank you. That's how you treat me. We're not going through there. 
Oh, what do we have here? Cameras. Sensor network. Sensors indicate that an encoded signal of Nakul origin is being beamed to the Doomsday Machine. It's coming from the chamber the Nakul were guarding so intently. According to these logs, whenever the Doomsday Machine attempts to engage its primary directives, a signal pulse is beamed to its command core and the machine stops. It appears we're one step closer to learning how they're controlling a Doomsday Machine. So that's cool. We're learning how they control it and they're controlling it. That's very cool. So if that we lose that control though, that means the Doomsday Machine will go off its rocker. Subcommander, I've been instructed to grant you access to this facility. And will you obey? Of course, Subcommander. My family is a friend to the Tall Shar and loyal to the Empire. Access for you and your team is granted. Mm, thank you. Carry on. The music is really cool, too. It's got kind of an eerie tone to it. Check coordination logs. Please input your selection below. All right, let's access log CH-2204. The Senate has dispatched an agent from an alien race known as the Nakul. Repugnant creature. But she's of a keen mind and cunning. I can appreciate as a Romulan officer. If only her visage wasn't so hideous. She boasts she has a weapon that will turn the tide in favor of Romulus. An old song, to be sure. But she sings it sweetly. Interesting. Krog's mysterious backer, the so-called Envoy, has made an impression in the right circles of power. We'll see if he can deliver, however. Data on his miracle weapon is due to arrive soon. Those scars, truly hideous. Krog is practically radiant in comparison. All right. My researchers have analyzed the Nakul weapon data. It matches a report we have on an incident in Federation space involving a doomsday machine. If accurate, this weapon destroyed USS Constellation and nearly rid the cosmos of USS Enterprise. It seems Enterprise's thrice-damned captain exposed a vulnerability in the weapon. I shall have to address this with Krog upon her return. So they know of the Doomsday Machine. Krog arrives tomorrow, along with her reportedly improved weapon. I believe the Envoy will be making an appearance as well. It seems it's the season for guests. If my agents are to be believed, we'll be getting a visit from the Tal Shiar very soon. I'm already suffering the witless bureaucrat from the Senate. To endure the serpents of the secret police is nearly too much to ask of a true Romulan. Okay. A lot of interesting info there. Let's go to the conference room and see about this envoy we're hearing about. Ooh, let's speak to Commander Chulak. Subcommander, if this doomsday weapon lives up to the Nakul woman's boasts, it will ensure the Empire's dominance over the entire quadrant. The Federation and the Klingons will have no choice but to bend the knee to Romulus or face annihilation. Hmm. And do you trust the Nakul, Commander? No. Trust is a hard-earned currency. However, I respect their weapon. I see. Okay, and Nikul, Krog. Greetings, Sub-Commander. I knew it was only a matter of time before the fabled Tal Shiar came to call. The Nakul have brought a glorious weapon to your empire. You won't be disappointed. I can assure you. I hope so, Specialist, for your sake. Have a care, friend. We don't take kindly to threats. Ah, uh, but that's how I roll. <laughs> take your place at the table. Here we go. Your attention, please. Let's begin, shall we? We thank Specialist Krog of Nakul for joining us. 
We have concerns about the dangers involved with this weapon. You have nothing to fear from the machine, my friend. Would you be so confident if you were here, Envoy? Utterly so, Commander. Soon, the Doomsday Machine will bring our foes to their knees. Bold words, Envoy. We shall see, won't we? Boy, he is it ugly. Seem a demonstration is in order. See to it, Krog. As you wish. Shall we, Commander? Very well. Show me what this beast of yours can do. It will be my pleasure. Enjoy the show, interloper. They are using holographic disguises, guards. Deal with them. Uh-oh, he recognizes us. Somehow, some way. Uh oh. Oh, we're gonna fight. Escape the command unit, or return to operations. Don't know why I did that, <laughs> but I was dying, I meant to do that. Ow, come on. Remember, we are playing in advanced difficulty, so that's why missions are a little bit harder, and they are def I'm definitely feeling it right now. I sure am feeling it. Come on. Uh, heal me. Yeah, I'm feeling the heightened difficulty level now. Really starting to feel it. I'm dying a lot easier. This means I may have to concentrate on some really good armor and shields in the future. Also, maybe a trait or something to get me some more health. Because, yeah. That's going to be a thing. Look at all these goodies. Killed me too fast. I was gonna use my spore, my spore thing. Wow, I am feeling the burn, and look, all my, my bridge officers are dying, too.
Okay, let's take care of this and you guys take care of them, please. Yeah, it's definitely getting harder on advanced difficulty. I can tell a difference now. The cool equipment is safely on board. We're ready to beam you out of here. Let's go. And long load into space. Yeah, that difficulty's getting harder. I'm dying a lot easier. So are my bridge officers, and I do have very rare shields and armor, but man. Still feeling it. Okay. We're trying to get our computer to interface with that Nakul control console but their tech is quite advanced. I need at least five minutes to integrate it. You've got two. There's an enemy fleet and a live doomsday machine out there. Your uninvited guests will make a fine target for the weapon, Chulak. Warning. machine is about to open fire! Dang it! Well, I didn't get out of the blast fast enough, and, uh... That is what happens. That is indeed what happens. It's powerful. Don't be in front of its blast. Noted. targeting us again. We need to move. That was close. Almost got this console working. so we can transmit the control codes. Hey, I got the control code in. Activating shutdown protocol. Now. Something is wrong. It's not working. It's firing indiscriminately. Whoa. Enough! It's only a matter of time before that thing destroys the planet. All ships, destroy the doomsday weapon and the cool ships. All right. Now! 
The Romulans are now against the Nakul and the Doomsday Machine. The fabled Romulan treachery at last. You'll regret this, Chulak. Romulan attack wing. Fire torpedoes into that thing's fall. All ships, protect the planet from that machine at all costs. Man, I'm getting destroyed. Dang, I cannot stay alive. We're making some headway. Yikes. Look at that, I claim, I came, no, I was like, I came to, within 2% of dying, and then I died. I did survive that blast, though, <laughs> but then I died. Jeez. It's a tough battle on advanced difficulty at my level. go there is your explanation for what happened to Galarnan core a doomsday machine slammed into it As 
you wish, Commander. Daniels would like to meet you, meet him on his ship once he transitions back to the 25th century. All right, I'll be there shortly. Then our cool ship must have detonated within the Doomsday Machine. Disrupted it somehow. This must feel like a Pyrrhic victory at best, too. What, Daniels, your face? An uh, occupational hazard, I'm afraid. I'll be fine. What matters is that Chulak and his allies would have killed billions had their plan succeeded. Instead, his life is a cautionary tale, forever disgraced by his loss here today. Wow. A lot of stuff happened there. Including what the heck is happening to Daniel's face? We stopped them this time, at great cost. Clearly, the Nakul and their leader, this envoy, are willing to do anything to win this war, even commit genocide. It's unfortunate that Chulak didn't stand up to the Nakul sooner. It might have prevented this tragedy today. Now look at our rewards. A very cool thing called Neutronium-laced combat armor. Physical damage, kinetic damage, energy damage, and maximum hit points. This is good armor. Congratulations, Sub Commander. So we are now Sub Commander 27. And we just gained a space ability called Tactical Initiative. Let's uh, go back to um, New Romulus. And we'll look at Tactical Initiative, so we know what that does. Put it on our hotbar. So, I believe this is it. Yes, it is. But that's not where I want it. Let's move it. Okay, let's move it over here. Let's put Tactical... Let's put Fire on my mark here and that there. So, what is Tactical Initiative? It targets friend and self. It sets a recharge timer on your tactical bridge officers to 65% of their base cooldown for 45 seconds. Basically, it reduces the cooldown on my bridge officers for space. So I can hit it and my cooldown will reduce in time. So I can use my abilities faster. So that's a cool ability to have there. It looks like I took damage. I've got impulse engine damage. I did blow up several times, so that makes sense that I would have some kind of damage. I'm gonna have to go heal that. We are now Sub-Commander 27, so we're only three away from hitting a Romulan Commander. Can you believe that? And we're gonna go ahead and get another ship at 30. Let's uh, continue putting our skills in here. This is Improved Weapon Specialization. Let's put that here. Purchase, okay. There we go, that's now added. My traits are still there, that's good. Excuse me, that's good. In terms of reward, we got this Neutronium laced combat armor. So we can look at it compared to what I'm using now, which is an energy dampening armor. Um, physical damage is much higher resistance on the Neutronium. Kinetic is um, the same. Energy damage is the same, but I get a maximum hit point increase on the Neutronium. Whereas the other one is just a shield regeneration. So this could be a good, this could be a good one. In fact, I think this will be a good one because what this will do for me is increase my maximum hit points. I've been having a lot of problem with dying on the ground. So, this will improve my health here. And maybe I won't die as much. And at the same time, I pretty much have everything else the same between it. Um, the energy damage resistance is the same, and the kinetic damage resistance is the same. And I'll be gaining a physical damage, a high physical damage resistance. So, yeah, it's worth it. Um... I'm gonna do that. So my health right now is 409. It should go up when I put this on. 
And my resists are here, my resists. Kinetic is 30. Phaser, disruptor, radiation, toxic, cold, psionic. My physical is 13.1 and kinetic is 30. So 13.1, 30.1. And then 409. Let's put this on. Now I have 478 health. So I won't die as bad. 478 health. And I've got 32.3 physical resist and 30.1 kinetic. So kinetic stayed the same. But I got a huge bump in physical resist. And my health is 478. That's the more important part there. I've got a maximum health improvement with this armor. So now if I really wanted to, and if I were not recording these videos for you guys, if I were just doing this on my own, I would probably go repeat that mission four more times and put this same armor, this same Nikul armor, or what's it called again? I forgot the name of it. It's a neutronium lace combat armor. I would go ahead and put that on all of my bridge officers that I'm going to have on the ground. That's what I normally would do if I weren't recording this for YouTube or anything. I would just go ahead and replay this thing four times and equip all of my bridge officers with the same armor. That would really make them powerful on ground, even through all of level 30. And I can always upgrade the equipment anyway. So that would be something that I would definitely do. But for right now, we're just going to leave this on my captain. I'm not going to go replay this mission. Because it would just make us go ahead and shoot up to 30. And I don't really want to hit level 30 just yet. I want to play some more missions to get there naturally in the storyline. And in terms of that, let's see if it added anything under... No, it did not. So here's what happened. It actually took yesterday's whatever it was, and it moved it down here. It's called Yesterday's War. Look where it moved it. It was up here, right? right? It was right under In Shadows. Now look what's under In Shadows. You got Wasteland. It moved the missions all the way down to here after the Cardassian missions. So it's really splitting this, these up and peppering them throughout the game. But you have to wait till you get to that position to play that mission. But it has opened up more missions. Now we've got Vorgon Conclusions right after Core of the Matter. So just like I thought, it does open up another mission for you to play. But you need to be a Sub-Admiral 1 in order to play it. Level 43. So that's way down here after we level up a lot more. So it's a little odd that it does that, but that's how it works. It's like it disappears, and then the next one is now another new storyline we're gonna start called Wasteland. And that should be interesting too. This one's gonna be all ground. So that's how the storyline works. It's a little weird, but that is the only first and only mission that jumps down like that after you play it. Starts up here, jumps to the bottom. I just find that kind of funny. Anyway, so that's going to be all the missions for today. And uh, look forward to the next one. Should be fun. We're going to start another new series. <laughs> It'll be all ground called Wasteland in the next mission. That should be interesting. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.